cool filter you have there. <laughs> Thanks. Anything that makes the office look a little better. Because <laughs> there's been an avalanche over here um, of books. Uh. Needs to get fixed. Um, and uh, just general chaos. <laughs> cool. Hi, everybody. All right, welcome to the meeting. Uh, my job is to remove roadblocks and to get resources and to help get us uh, past any um, phase transitions that we might have trouble with. Um, so we've, we've done an awful lot. We have hardware out in the field and happy students, it looks like. Uh, things, packets zipping around in the lab. And we're still, uh, we haven't destroyed our chances with the uh, sounding rocket, so, <laughs> which is great. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And then uh, Jan King was very, very interested in us using this as a way to sort of suss out a new uh, part five application that would be more useful for space. So that's still still on the table, but I haven't done anything with that other than look over what needs to be done. We'd actually have to have something that we need to apply for in order to to get that rolling, um, but that's that's something that that uh, that we'd like to do. Um, and then it's still the case that LibraSpace would, you know, put forward their their one U design. That uh, they had boards that came back in December, but I have not heard a whole lot about that in terms of like the lab performance or anything. So I think no news is probably good news from LibraSpace. Um, so lots of opportunities to get stuff done, but I think the the big bulk of the work is going to have to be in software. So that's uh, that's all I know. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jay. Okay. It looks like we've got uh, a couple other folks jumping in. Do we want to wait a sec? Oh sure. Yeah. There's Dan, and I see <clears throat> Annika is connecting to audio. Okay. And I'm sure Dr. Johnston will have oh, plenty to say. Sure. There's Dan. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I can give. I'll give my little the updates that I've got here. Um, one of my homework assignments was to actually figure out, uh, get in contact with the antenna company, and um, I did. Um, they evidently don't receive emails from me, so that's fine. Um, but the so they do have a blade antenna. Um, I posted in Slack what the price will be. Uh, we can buy a couple of them as long as they're not going to. As long as they don't end up sending, selling them to somebody else first. Um, it wasn't clear what that meant, um, <laughs> but that was right. their story. Yeah. Um, it was, it was weird. It was stated weird. It's like they're available pending prior sale or something. So I think I suspect the customer they're building, they build these in lots. And I suspect the customer they're building for said, you know, I need X and they probably have to run it by the customer one last time before they give us any, um, the up aerospace was okay with that antenna. It's a little bit long for the, to mount on the bulkhead that they want to use. So they would need to put an extra mounting hole in it. Um, they had asked if UB would provide a 3D model and UB, UB came back and said, we have no 3D models. So my, my current task is to get, get the 2D dimensions over to up aerospace and see what they think um, and go from there to see whether UB will do the whole or if up aerospace will attempt to do the whole. Um, the, the bottom line was the antennas are like fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen fifty a piece. Um, I don't know if we want just one. I mean, we can buy one, um, maybe two, but um, that's kind of the story. At least, at least it's there. Um, the original antenna that Up Aerospace wanted me to look at was a, it was the same model but a different material, stainless steel. And the person I talked with on the phone, she's like, "We haven't built that one in in years. I have to find out about that." And she's like, "Oh yeah. dear." <laughs> Yeah, she's like, if you want to buy, if you want to buy ten of them, that's great. <laughs> I'm like, no, we don't want to buy ten of them. Yeah. So, okay. So that's so that's that. At least there's it, it, it's encouraging that there's a solution out there, um, and it looks like it's just money and figuring out if we can get them. Okay. Um, so that's the antenna, and then I did post some stuff about some crossover work I did on the uh, um, for the 1276, the, the Semtec chip. Um, yeah, that was cool. It, it's cool. Um, it requires to do the like the M17 stuff requires a pretty fast processor because you're you're doing 48 kilohertz um, sample rates and doing SPI at that rate. I'm doing it really brute force, so there's probably ways to do it 
I'm slower processors um, if you're smarter than I am. Um, but the, the cool thing is I think even on the slower processors, you could probably modulate analog voice um, at a lower sample rate. Um, that's the first test I did with some analog voice stuff. Um, cool. And it's kind of neat that you can use the, the Semtech chip for both transmit and receive of analog voice for FM, FM voice. So who knows, you know, if you stick one of these and they end up in a small set and we want to have a voice beacon, <laughs> it's, ah, there's, yeah. there's a way to do that. Um, oh, that's pretty so, cool. Or, okay. Yeah. So that's it. That's what I got. That's righteous. Very good. Okay. Um, yeah, Dr. Johnston, please, uh, you have the floor. I think you have one of the boards and things going okay. Uh, do you mean, do I have one of the original Ambisat boards? I, yeah, I think you have, definitely have one of the original Ambisat boards, but you have one of the 70 centimeter boards? I do not. Okay, I thought you did. Uh, no, I, I would like to get one, but I do, I do not have one. Okay. S stick your address info in Slack and I'll okay. send you one. Okay, cool. Yeah, these are the same. It's essentially the same board. We did not have the IHU, and it's been moved to the ham band 70 centimeter to be a little more useful uh, for the amateur satellite service. Cool. Yeah. No. Um. Unfortunately, I just found out I don't don't have any students for the next year to work on the work on the balloon payload again. Um. But uh, but but yeah, I, I can definitely build up one of the boards and uh, and and test it out and maybe maybe fly it later in the year. Okay. Do you have any access to like sounding rockets or um, or payloads, like amateur payloads that we can put this with or integrate this with? Not not rockets. No. Nope. Okay. All right. We'll stand by for your address. All right, Dan, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, uh, heading into our spring break. Our uh, embedded systems class is transitioning out of uh, intro material into the uh, big projects. And that's what I uh, baited uh, Alex and Anakit with, was uh, if you work on the Ambisat, that will be your embedded systems project. Um, so that now we're uh, we're going into that. I think they'll have some more time to be working on stuff. We got some, you know, initial packets and such uh, in the last couple of weeks. But uh, instead of working on whatever other uh, projects I come up with, uh, we'll be sending packets with with this one. Cool. That's exciting. Wow, spring break already. Okay. Yeah, here it's a little bit later. And we saw the yeah we saw those packets in in the lab. Um, is there anything that we can help you with in order to to make it cooler, better, faster, more more amazing for students? Um, I think uh, I think our next step is going to be just changing the modulation parameters and demonstrating that we can receive, you know, keep uh, keep the receive uh, link uh, up. Uh, we were watching them on the SDR. Uh, the last time we were in the lab, and that was that was interesting. We get we had a uh, well, when you throw up an SDR, uh, we were starting to listen to number stations and such too, but that was not relevant to the project. <laughs> but still, it's pretty cool. There's an awful lot going on right now uh, on on some bands, so good to look. Um, are there are there some parameters that? are useful to look at or some subsets, um, spreading factors that are common. Otherwise we'll just randomly choose a few and see what we get. Yeah, I think I'd probably defer to Jay on that one if he has a preference, because um, there are some. Yeah, if I can hit my mute button. I'll <laughs> Um, 
There are some, I guess it depends on what kind of bandwidth we're looking at. And, and maybe that maybe that's the direction to go is like if assuming a, a, a LEO satellite, what makes sense for spreading factor and bit rates and things that, you know, should we be looking, if we're in the ham band, we may not, we may not want to go, you know, 250 kilohertz wide. Um, I guess I, that's that's what I would default to because I've played with a bunch of them and it, the the ground based stuff tends to be like the the one twenty five or two fifty for spreading factors, um, but and I think the um, like the LoRaWAN stuff actually will negotiate spreading factor and bit rate based on quality of of reception, um, so they'll actually they'll actually dynamically adjust. Um, so I guess we whatever works best for a Leo satellite would be nice. Um, if some of them are just like, you might be able to throw out some of them just based on they can't be used. Um, so that might now help narrow it. Um, the only other thing the, the on the spreading factors and the and the the, the bit rate or symbol rates. Um, what's fun is if you if you haven't done this already is to um, go to some of the really the like go a really wide spreading factor and then a really slow data rate and then watch that on the SDR crank up the speed of your SDR waterfall. And then you can actually see the 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 chirps in much better detail um, if you haven't already. Maybe maybe you guys are already dove in that far. Well, that's a really cool thing to look at for for basic sort of knowledge and educational use. That's some neat stuff. It sounds like it's a pretty good question. What's the best for what would be the best for Lou? I remember seeing. Uh... Uh, some formulas in the data sheet about um, uh, offset, like frequency offset performance. Yeah. And that's that's one we'll want to keep an eye on. So maybe we'll choose yes. some that, that can handle a big offset. Try those out first. Part of the problem with the frequency offset, um, yeah, that, that's an interesting one. Uh, I, if you're using like the hardware that I sent you, with the, those modules don't have very tight oscillators on them. Um, and if you go down to the really narrow bandwidth, um, you have to manually tune each one until it, or tune tune one of them, tune a receiver or a transmitter, or, you know, whichever side, um, to get them to agree. Um, because you know, when you get the nice wide bandwidth, you can be you you know you can have some offset and it still picks it up. But you go narrow and it's like you're off by 10, 20 kilohertz, forget it, you're, you're done. Um, so that, that's a whole other interesting, uh, <laughs> that's another interesting experiment or, or path of research for your students. It'd be really handy for uh, early orbit stuff where you're not sure where your frequencies are in the first place and you're just kind of- yeah, That's a good point. Okay, well, that's yeah. two big questions. Are these questions we can figure out a, a sort of a, a first pass answer in the next week? I have no teaching responsibilities next week, so I get to do fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean you does this qualify as fun stuff, or is this <laughs> or is this fall into the teaching responsibility category? <laughs> Well, I decided if I was going to deal do it do uh, amateur radio, it was going to have to be part of teaching. Otherwise, it's not happening. Like yeah. I, I do no <laughs> amateur stuff when I go home. So, yeah, anyway, or wait till I retire and then. Have <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're. I think we're all trying our best. Um, okay, so maybe. Um, okay, well, I, I'd say that that was a uh, somewhat. Uh, uh, a very elegant non-responsive answer um mr dan um but like i think what we could probably do for, from today is to write up these two questions in um something yeah. more than scribble on on note paper and uh and try to get uh a, at least like a paragraph on each one and um and put it out there so at the next opportunity to find out what's the best for leo in terms of but we're talking about bit rate and symbol rate, and then, and then in terms of the offset, to to look at like what the limits are, because that's actually some some useful stuff. I haven't seen that already published. I don't think anybody's really looking uh, too hard at this. Or if they are, 
um, they haven't shared it. It hasn't been uh, put out there in terms of an, like an open source publication. And since Laura keeps showing up uh, and keeps getting proposed, and in some cases actually getting into orbit, in other cases getting denied uh, coordination or denied a license, then uh, it would be, it'd be a good contribution. So I'll, I'll do my best to help with the help with that. All I right. can help write up the, the questions um, if that if that yeah. is all right. Um, oh, yeah. That unless would be unless Dan, you want to uh, it's either way. I mean, I can I can write them up or if Dan, if you or if you want to look at them after I write them up and make suggestions, if that would help. Yeah, I think we can share a document or something. Um, uh, this I plan on looking at this over the next week. Cool. Okay. Something at least uh, you know the data sheet version of what. Right. What the data sheet uh, gives an idea about about the offsets. Yeah, that'd be good stuff. I can I can envision a future Python notebook, Jupyter notebook <laughs> that has it in glorious, fancy, gooey detail. All right. I think uh, we haven't heard from Aniket. You have the floor. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, this is me. Really nice to meet you. Um, yeah, so I don't have like a lot to say, but uh, we did do get some progress like with tutorials and like afterwards. And Professor Dan White has been like really helpful uh, of me understanding like a lot of these things. Like all of this thing is pretty kind of new to me. Uh, like you were talking about spreading factors and all those all those things. Uh, those are still kind of I'm kind of new to those things, uh, but Professor has been really helpful understanding like everything from the very ground up. So um, I haven't been able to do much this this week and the last week just because I've been like trying to be more involved with my internship process and finding jobs and stuff. But I have the spring break now. Um, I should be like completely free. Uh, like sort of like few other things. Uh, and I'll be here on campus, so, and I think Geller, like, our engineering building, like, normally stays open during those times, too. At least I remember from last year. So I can I can work on a lot this week and the weeks coming after. Um, I think we'll make good progress uh, this week, like, in terms of, like, testing a lot of things, I believe. Awesome. Um, You're hired. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dig right in. We'll uh, we'll do our best to come up with a good problem statement so that there's so you can get some traction. Completely understand what you mean about you know there's a whole bunch of concepts here. Uh, just the thing about uh, bit rate versus symbol rate and and things like spreading factors. Once you get it kind of under your fingers, though, it will it, it'll be okay. It'll snap into focus, and it won't take it won't take much longer for for you to kind of get get a um, Get a good foundation on that, and and see where where um where those things you know where they make a difference, um right. you know and that like there's the numbers there's like all of the theoretical stuff with the, with bit rate and symbol rate and spreading factor and and all those cool charts, and then what we're moving towards is uh, okay so how does that then apply to a particular environment and the environment we're looking at is is somewhat you know uh, Leo with Doppler moving around and and through atmosphere and and all of that, um, you know, is a, is a particular fairly high performance uh, channel environment. Uh, so the stuff you're right. learning will, will smooth right into that. And then you'll see that this, this is a, if you do communications moving forward, you'll see that this is a pattern. You know, you, you, once you're given a frequency and a set of modulations or, or other re requirements and specifications, and then you look at the channel and each channel is different. And, you know, so it'll, it'll start to make a lot more sense. Right, right. Did you say, Leo or something the yeah. environment that was yeah low earth orbit L E O oh okay. so that's the target for this particular uh, right. circuit is that it's right. supposed to perform in low earth orbit right thank you uh, but yeah I, I don't have much to say apart from that uh, cool I'll nice. keep you said plenty. Yeah, I'm really that's, excited uh, good about stuff. this awesome yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> thank you good to hear all right anything else uh, anything else anybody has to share or any roadblocks that you have or any resources that you need? Purchases, sounds like we probably need to buy an antenna and that's totally possible. Um, 
any other purchases or expenses that anybody's looking at? We already have a real-time spectrum analyzer. Cool. Regal, uh, last semester, Regal had a deal where they'd give you the 40 megahertz bandwidth upgrade for no cost, and we've got it now. Right on. So <laughs> That's very cool. Excellent. All right, so it sounds like the action items are come up with some good problem statements so that we can get, get folks uh, you know, some traction to consume uh, the, the time that they have. So we'll do that um, on Slack or, or like, uh, like Dan said, in a shared document. Um, but yeah, l please let me know if there's anything that occurs to you that's a roadblock or, or any additional resources that's needed. Um, that's what I'm here to help with. And I'll see y'all on Slack. No one can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of our recorded history in a time span of about a half century. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. Only last week did we develop penicillin and television and nuclear power. Seven. 